praise the name of Jesus. I'd like to welcome everyone today to our midweek teach. Our word today is coming out of Isaiah. Isaiah 55. We'll start in verse 1, which is Ho, everyone who thirst, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come buy and eat. Yes, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend money for what is not bread? And your wages for what does not satisfy. Listen carefully to me and eat what is good. And let your soul delight itself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me. Hear and your soul shall live. And I will make an everlasting covenant with you. The sure mercies of David. Indeed I have given him as a witness to the people, a leader and commander for the people. Surely you shall call a nation you do not know, and nations who do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God and the only one of Israel. I should say, the, and the Holy One of Israel. For he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth. So are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven and do not return there, but water the earth, and make it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out with joy, and be let out with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth into singing before you, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress tree, and instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle tree. And it shall be to the Lord for a name, for an everlasting sign that shall be, shall not be cut off. So I'll leave it there. The well-known invitation to an abundant life. Abundant life, talking of Messiah, speaking of our good Lord, who we are told here to call upon his name. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. And the Lord's always waiting to abundantly pardon. But how many 
are ready to repent, return. The primary verse today is 11. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please. And it shall prosper in the thing for which I send, which I sent it. So, tell of a message today. His word needs no help. His word needs no help. We have nothing to say and we have nothing to claim without his word. Can we just go over to 1 Peter for a minute? We have nothing to say and nothing to claim without his word. It's the word of the Lord that does the lot. We go on to 1 Peter 4.11. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. Anyone ministers, let him minister with the ability which God supplies, that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. To whom belong the glory, the dominion forever and ever. Amen. So if we speak, we speak as the oracles. The Lord gets the glory. They're his oracles. It's his word. Right? The ways of men seemeth right to themselves, but the way thereof is death. The Lord says that his ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts and my thoughts than your thoughts he says Amen so he's got it all tied up just like the heavens are higher than the earth and how much higher are the heavens than the earth the heavens will always be higher than the earth. Right? The atmosphere will always be higher than the earth. Always be above. So, um, we have church people all over the world, TV evangelists, And female, so-called female evangelists, determining and deciding, or well, they think they are, when people are going to listen, and uh, who they will listen to when it comes to God. Or oh, they'll listen now, or oh, they'll listen to this person, or they'll listen to that person. But the truth of the entire matter is the polls and the, and the stats and emotional whims of men and women will never be able to, to harness, to, to chain the words of Jesus, the word, the word of God. No matter how many books are written on how to talk nicely to people. Right? No matter how many books they sell about how to do this and how to do that, nothing comes near the pure word of God, the full counsel. I mean, did the people listen to Noah? Come on. Did the people listen to Jeremiah? I praise God that we're not obligated to religious men and women with their systematic evangelical beliefs and programs. You see, we're all obligated to God, every one of us. 
whether we're saved or unsaved, we're all obligated to God because he's the creator. Right? Especially those who want to be saved from sin, self, Satan, the wrath to come and hell for. We will submit and subject ourselves to God. There's many people out there paying top dollar in vain to buy books on how to be happy even. How to be happy in 50 moves. How to do this, how to do that. How to um, become a minister. You see, happiness um, is, is in heavenly happiness, of course, not just a happiness that endemic people would know about, temporary, fleeting, but heavenly happiness is the result of departure from known sin. I mean, I, I know a lot, of, a lot of people wouldn't understand that. Departure from known sin. It just sounds too simple, doesn't it? Departure from doing things you know are wrong. You, you know it's wrong to do. You know it's not acceptable to God. You know it's not pleasing to God. We continue to do it. If you depart from that, which you can't until you call out to Jesus, you, you, no one can depart from sin without Jesus. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. They'll be saved out of that. They'll be saved from that sin. They'll be saved from self. Satan, the wrath to come and hell for him. I've heard ministers even say that um, happiness is initiated. Happiness is initiated by making a, a decision to be happy. <laughs> it's sort of leads us to the door of um, positive thinking, then. The positive thinking can't save you or make you heavenly happy, because it's only thinking. Right? But re repentance is a, it, it is a solid decision. No turning back. It's not thinking about it. Thinking about things won't change anything. We need to, to, to put a, 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 our uh, sorrow and remorse into action. We need to make good with it. As the, the scriptures say, we go over to Matthew and have a look there in Matthew. Matthew chapter, uh, here we are. Yeah, Matthew chapter 3 um, and verse 8. Therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance and do not think to say to you so that we have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. <coughs> verse 8. 
therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance. Doesn't that say something? We have to bear fruit worthy of God allowing us to repent. So, it's all about the Lord, isn't it? It all comes back to the glorification of the Lord. Not human pampering in theory. Human, human pampering in, in, in theory is no match for the cross of the Christ. No, no match whatsoever. You see, the, the cross of the Christ, what Jesus done at the cross, ticked every box. And when we come to the Lord, it's the beginning of our crucifixion of the old man, isn't it? And we start to tick the boxes one by one that he's already ticked and signed in his name so we can tick them. There's no way we can tick them. Everything he wants us to do, tick, 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 done, 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 done. Take off. Upon the clouds. Hallelujah. Little by little, day by day, line upon line, precept upon precept, little here and a little there. Huh? Laying hold of that abundant life in the Christ who died, cruel death on the tree for you and for me and for us and for all who would call upon his name. The cross of the Christ, the outworking of the cross, of the Christ. Right? Offers endless blessing, doesn't it? Not some man or woman making the decision to be happy. Where's Jesus in that? There's no one. There, there, there's only you there. You on your Pat Malone struggling and, and, and being positive rather than negatives. You're being positives. Positive and negative, not in the scriptures, are they? They're just not there. Positive and negative useless when it comes to salvation. In the natural there's positive and negative poles. Of course there is. And there's gravity and all kinds of scientific um, definites. But I'm talking in the spiritual. I'm talking about salvation and the power. The power of Jesus' word. The power of the word himself. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void. But it shall accomplish what I please. Prosper in the thing for which I sent it. It's all about Jesus there, isn't it? It's all about the Lord. So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. When we read the red writing of Jesus, they're the words that go forth from his mouth. When we read the scriptures of Peter and Paul, Matthew, they're the words that come forth from Jesus' mouth. They were inspired by the mouth and the spirit of the Christ. That's why they call it the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ according to what Matthew heard, 
ลึกจนมากซาเชลมอยเวิร์นบีบินกัสฟูนตัวเวิร์นแค่ไม่ทำอะไรเลยถ้าเกิดฟูนนั่นคือเพราะพระเจ้าบอกว่าไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่วโลกไปทั่
he's taken us beyond happy, beyond chasing happy, beyond chasing joy, chasing peace, chasing contentment, chasing greatness, grandeur. He's taken us beyond that. He's taken us beyond ourselves. He's taken us into him. He's taken us into the spirit. For these are the sons of God who are led by the spirit of God. That's a spiritual leading, not hum ha in the mountains of uh, South America or Quebec or whatever. Hum, no, 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 no. That's not spiritual. That's just religion of men that can't save you. That can't deliver you. That won't make you happy. Even though you might have a Dalai Lama smiling all the time, he's crying inside because he doesn't know Jesus. Because if he did know Jesus, he wouldn't be walking around with an orange gown on, talking rubbish. He'd be speaking as the oracles of God. And he'd be ministering with the ability that the Lord gave him so that God would receive the glory through Christ Jesus. It's simple. Everything about Jesus is so simple. It's, it, it's profound. It's awesome. So simple that he's He's taken the foolish and the weak and the abased to confound the wise. You see, the Lord has taking, taken us on, as I have said last Sunday, me, to a place where all things are working for us automatically. No? Those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose, all things are working for them, everything. Not some things, or certain things, all things. No matter what happens. So isn't that a beautiful um, encouragement, huh? to understand that his word needs no help. There's nothing you can do to the word of the Lord to better it. <laughs> That'd be like saying you're going to better Jesus. You can't better Jesus. He's perfect. He always was. He was in the beginning. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. Jesus was with Father and Jesus is God as Father is God and as Holy Ghost is God. Amen. Isn't that wonderful? What Jesus has done. So, his word needs no help. This is all we have to offer the world. And when I say this is all, I mean... I'm not saying that it is um, a small thing, but this is the one and only offer and offering we have to a lost world that's going to change the lives of individuals as they repent and return to their maker. You're never going to change the world. You know that? No man, no uh, organisation, no religion. You're never going to change the world. 
Not even Jesus changed the world. The world will always be the world and Jesus will always be Jesus and Jesus' disciples will always be Jesus' disciples. <laughs> Father will always be Father. Holy Ghost will always be Holy Ghost. The truth will always be the truth and lies will always be the lies. Darkness will always be darkness and light will always be light. So, uh, making a decision to be happy, there's nothing about Jesus there, is there? Or the out working and the outcome of the cross there's no bringing any glory to Jesus if it, it, look if it doesn't bring glory to Jesus forget it it, it probably only amounts to a degenerated philosophical mindset which is useless isn't it philosophies of men we're told in Colossians to stay clear. Well and truly clear of the philosophies of men. Colossians 2, verse 8. Beware, lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of men according to the basic principles of the world and not according to the Christ. Basic principles of the world, not according to the Christ. It has to be according to the Christ. It has to be thus says the Lord. Amen? It has to be thus says the Lord. Making a decision to be happy it sounds like some Eastern religion, doesn't it? Buddhism or Taoism. Some Shizm or ism. Positive thinking. It sounds like Robert Schuller or Bobby Schuller or something. Making the decision to be happy. As if you could be happy without Jesus. Well, I thought I was. <laughs> I thought I was happy without Jesus when I didn't know Jesus. I thought I was happy. It's a merry-go-round of a, a limited, flaky happiness. It was a terrible life I lived. Terrifying and terrible. So, degenerated human philosophy, beware. You see, when we're not immune, we've got to beware that no one cheats us through human philosophy, degenerated, endemic philosophy, empty deceit. There's nothing there, just deceiving. There's no way out. With empty deceit or philosophy, philosophy of endemic men and women, there's no gain over sin. There's no departure. There's no deliverance. There's no cleansing. There's no empowerment. There's no forgiveness. Jesus has to be in the equation, smack bang, in the centre, exalted high. Then we're going to see something happen. Amen. So, deciding to be happy lacks depth, doesn't it? Lacks depth. It lacks strength. 
It lacks power. It lacks consistency. And all those things, that that's what Jesus offers us. Jesus offers us a life of depth, strength, power, consistency. But when we pick up our cross and follow his directions, okay? when we pick up our cross, follow his doctrines and his teachings, which leads all the way to the gates of Pearl. Hallelujah. The cross of the cross. Endless, endless blessing. The outworking of the cross provides us with endless blessing. Heavenly happiness. Safety. Now and forever. I'm true repentance. <coughs> true repentance. Back, back by fruits befitting. Eh? Such a serious claim that you repented. So where's the fruits following? If we truly repented, there'll be fruits following. There'll be fruits befitting them. If we truly repented, we'll see the fruit thereof. If you take a hammer and you break up, break a... Uh, China statue to pieces. You'll see. You'll see the uh, fruit. Once you're finished, it'll just be a statue broken into pieces. You'll see the outworking. If we repent, truly repent, we will see the fruit. We'll see that that person is. They're not doing that anymore. Because they repented. And then Jesus jumped on it. And forgave you. And filled you with joy. Of his safety and salvation. Cleansed you. Delivered you. And empowered you against that sin. So his word needs no help. We can't add anything to it. we just got to do what it says. How simple is that? And do you think for one minute that Jesus would write a doctrine and 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 bring forth a uh, manuscript and a writing and a theology and a teaching that only limited and few, and the super intellectual could understand? Do you really believe that? I don't believe that. But that's the, the claim of the Roman Catholic system and the Anglican Church. We heard about the Anglicans, didn't we? Heard about the Anglicans on Sunday. Well, at least one of the retired priests who married some young chappy and now they live happily in Romania. As homosexual bed buddies. The Roman Catholic Church, the Uniting Church, the Anglican Church, the Salvation Army and all the rest of them, all their rankings. They have all their rankings. But there's no such ranking in, in Jesus' army. Have a look at the scriptures. Yes, there was apostles, 
prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists. Right? But have a look at the Anglican Church and the Roman Catholic Church. They say, oh, you can't understand that. You just sit in the pew and believe what we say. But Acts 17, 11 says, no, don't just sit in the pew and, and believe what we say. Acts 17, 11 says, go home and check everything that that preacher, so-called minister, said to you. Check it all and recheck it with the Bible for your own soul's sake and don't let anyone steal your crown. Hallelujah. Amen. So, Jesus doesn't have a doctrine that only the intellect can grasp. We have sure proof of that. That's why he gave all his people the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. You may not speak in tongues. That doesn't mean you don't have the Holy Ghost. The proof of the Holy Ghost in someone's life is that you live a holy life. You, you can jump through all the hoops and do everything, have the bells and whistles, but if you're not living a holy life, can you say you have the Holy Ghost? Can you say you know God? See, we, we, it, it's a contradiction to say we have the Holy Ghost and live an unholy life. So you're actually worse than an unholy person because you said you had the Holy Ghost, but you're not doing what he says. So how can you be a son, a son of God? Because these are the sons of God who are led by the Holy Ghost. Romans 8, 14. Amen. Romans 8, 14. These are the sons of God who are led by the Holy Ghost. So, deciding to be happy, deciding to do this and deciding to do that, trying my best. To aim at happiness or, or to aim at anything is to miss the Christ. We're not aiming at it. We're, not, we're only aiming to please the Christ. Our aim is to be well-pleasing to him. And the way we do that is by doing what Jesus says. It makes Father happy. And then Father will love you. John 14, 21 to 24. Right? So, let me say that his word needs no help. The words of Jesus, so powerful. The problem is in the world today, People haven't tapped into the power of the word, the power of the Christ. They haven't tapped in. The power of his joy, the power of his love, the power of his peace. Hey? They haven't tapped into the power, Holy Ghost power. been far too long. People have been praising uh, the created in humanity and, and Mother Nature and, and, and not the true God. Jesus the Christ. And, and the results are what? repetitious repentance of all kinds of sin. Just 
a stagnant religious circle of defense. Forever studying, but never coming to the delivering knowledge of the love of the truth. Just going around in circles, just like the Baptist. The Baptist, the Evangelicals, the Pentecostal. I'm speaking in general. The Baptist. They love to tell people, you're saved by grace. There's nothing you can, uh, there's nothing for you to do. Jesus done it all. Well, Jesus did do it all for me up there upon the tree. He gave up the ghost and gave me the victory. Nothing was left undone. All was accomplished there. He's done it all. Let's press on. But in, in, in order to um, activate what Jesus has done at the cross, in order to activate the outworking, we must repent, bear fruits, Befitting repentance, bear fruits, um, to prove that we have repented. Bear the fruit of repentance and bear the fruit befitting repentance. So before we come to the Lord, God looks on our heart. If it's genuine, he'll forgive us. And then we go on to the next step. And God looks again. And he sees if we're bearing fruit. Worthy. Of what he done for us. And then the Bible says in John 15, one says, if we don't produce that fruit, he cuts us off and throws the branch into the fire. His word doesn't need any help. That's so true. But we're saved by grace through faith. And if you lose faith, you've lost your soul forever. So... The Baptist Church and the Evangelicals, they all like to say that everything's prepaid. You don't have to say anything or repent anymore. Or you don't have to do anything. But there's scripture after scripture saying uh, if you repent and when you repent and repent and times of refreshing will come and So where does, that, where does that leave us? It leaves us with a lot of people who are lying and deceived and they think that they can come to Christ and then just live out an Adamic life. But when we come to Christ, we must then get on the narrow road and live the Messianic life. But that's not kosher in today's world, you're not going to fill, fill the buildings by telling people that, that there's going to be dramatic change. And it is dramatic when it get down to the nitty gritty of family and friends, relatives and in-laws and outlaws. Positions in society, as we've seen with Mr. Israel Falau, who seems to have just faded into the, the grass of a French football club. Sold its soul. The French football club stitched his mouth up for a 
how much, I don't know, a million or more. Don't say anything about your Jesus. It's not the Jesus of the Bible. Israel Falau. His Jesus is another Jesus. It's a oneness Jesus. Based on modelism, which is not biblical. It's got so many errors and and potholes and pits. It's just not salvation. Mr. Falau was a true man of God and he truly followed the Jesus of the Bible. He would have just walked out years ago when he reckoned he got this revelation that he was a bad boy and he had to change. He would have, if he really did get hit by the Holy Ghost, he would have dropped the ball then and just went his way. And then, if he's such a great uh, spokesman, then he'd go back to all his teammates privately and tell them. But he wouldn't go back into, into that worldly sinful club. He'd go to them one by one and tell them what happened. He'd even put it on paper. Has Israel Folau got his testimony on paper? Exactly. What happened? Got enough money to get the best printing done in the world. I like to see it on paper, signed. And we know where we are, don't we? See, the word of God, his word needs no help. The word is the word. And if we speak the word, if we speak the word, it's not going to come back empty-handed and it's not going to uh, displease the Lord. It's going to make him very happy. And it'll accomplish what he decides to do with what's spoken. Hallelujah. So it's been too long of people in churches praising humanity in creation and Mother Nature and not God. Just paddling around in circles repetitious repentance never knowing the power of true repentance the power of true repentance the glory of the outworking in our lives Christ manifested in us Glory, glory. I mean, like, who is man and or, or woman that God would be mindful of them? Eh? Let's read Job. Let's go to Job. Writings of Job. Eh? We'll go over to Job. Chapter 17, and we'll have a read there, Job, just before Psalm, Job 17, and the verse is, oh, sorry, Job 7, and the verse is 17, Job 7, and the verse is 17, what is man that you should magnify him? that you should set your heart on him. That you, verse 18, that you should visit him every morning, test him every moment. 
what is man? Visit him, test him. Right? What is man? That God would visit him and test him. Well, that's for God's glory. It speaks of God's greatness. And God's humility. Not human worth or value. As many I've received them to believe in. They think always thinking of themselves. Oh, that's because we're so, you know, wonderful. God visits me and No, God is showing you his greatness and his his vast humility. His amazing humility as God. As God. Right? He's so wonderful. You see, the Lord says that men and women are but vapour. I'm going to read that again in Job 7. What is man that you should magnify him, that you should set your heart on him, that you should visit him every morning, and test him every moment. How beautiful, right? How beautiful. Job is suffering. But God Almighty, his ways aren't our ways. And we think that when everything's comfy and Humphrey, Humphrey bearish, everything's nice and cuddly, we think we're taking ground and everything's fine and everything's good with God. Not necessarily the case. Let's go to Psalm 39. Not necessarily the case. Psalm 39 and verse 5. Indeed you have made my days as hand breaths and my age is as nothing before you. Certainly every man at his best state is but vapour. Right? Is but vapour. And we walk about like a shadow and busy ourselves in vain and heap up riches and we don't really know who gathers them in the end because we're dead. You see, when you're dead, you're dead and you don't know who's going to gather those riches that you heaped up. You might have wrote some, uh, something on a paper and signed it, but how do you know that person's going to get that? Hey, how do you know? We don't know, not especially these days. Boy, oh boy. Wicked, crooked days. You see, there's a scripture in Jeremiah that says that um, the hearts of men, the hearts of men and women are deceitful and wicked. Who can know them? That's in Jeremiah 17, verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And a chap, he said to me recently, oh, you know, he was trying to support going on in known sin, I think. 
as far as I can see, he was deep within, although he never said so, he was once saved, always saved. Making excuses all the time for all kinds of people. And I said to him, but God said he'd give us a new heart. Aren't we a new creature with a new DNA and a new family, the family of God? So it should not we be orientated to our family, our new family, not our old family? That we knew in the flesh, but now we're orientated and gravitate to our new family. God's family. The born again family from above. That's where we gravitate. And what makes it so much uh, more strong is of this, the strength of this gravitation is we have the spirit of God in us, empowering us and, and pushing us forward toward our new family, our real brothers and real sisters, like-minded in the Christ, not like-minded in hobbies, or, or football, or cricket, or chess. Oh, he likes to do, or she likes to do the things I do, the way we do the things we do. <laughs> no, no. We don't know each other after the flesh. In the body of Christ, we don't know each other after the flesh. We know each other after the spirit. because of Holy Ghost in them and Holy Ghost in us and Holy Ghost in me and Holy Ghost in you. And there's no problem, there's no issues hey, with that. We're of one mind, not your mind, not my mind the mind of Christ, which is the doctrine of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go to 1 John 2. One John 2. One John 2, 12. I write to you, little children, because you, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. See that? That's the ultimate reason why God forgives your sins and my sins. His word needs no help. To say you're uh, helping Jesus is um, saying he's lacking. <laughs> he can't cut the mustard. I remember one minister, this one so-called minister, um, Reverend Sun Moon, he said and wrote that Jesus didn't cut the mustard, basically. So he had to step in, him and his wife. And they'd sit on gold thrones, Reverend Sun Moon. What a nutcase. I think the thrones are gold paint, but they're plastic, I think. Or like, they might be timber and big, big gold thrones they sit on, drinking wine, boozers. Millions follow these, these clowns. Millions. <laughs> and he said Jesus uh, couldn't hack the pace he never finished the job so he has to finish it and he's got a buddy 
He's got a religious buddy in the Philippines called Apollo Quibbaloy. He's a nutcase too. He reckons he is Jesus. He's the new son. And the place where he lives in a stinking mosquito infested swamp of the Philippines, he says it's the new Jerusalem. Can you believe that? The new Jerusalem. Swamp infested Philippines. Come on. Get real. These are the deluded ones, and they got followers coming out of their ears. So don't be down if <laughs> don't be down if you don't have followers coming out of your ears. That's no sign. If anything, it's a sign of deception. It's a sign of deceivers. Hey, it's a sign of deceivers. So we're in one John. Chapter 2, verse 12, I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. I write to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. What do you think of that? But you can't overcome They reckon you can't overcome. They said we're sold under sin. We just keep sinning and sinning and sinning. And you can't do anything about it because what Jesus has done at the cross is useless. But didn't Jesus say in Matthew one twenty when he came to take away the sin of his people? Uh, and they must not be his people. Matthew one twenty one. If you're Jesus' people, he'll take your sin away. If you let go of it. If you don't let go of it, you'll be damned to the fires of hell eternally. Look at the next bit in 1 John 2, 13. We'll read it again. I write to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, I write to you, young men, because you have overcome the wicked one. I write to you, little children, because you have known the Father. You see that? We got the Father, they've known the Father. Hey? What do you think of that? You have known the Father. Is there a Father? I suppose Jesus is the father, isn't he? The wondrous modelism garbage? No, no, Jesus is not father. They are one, but they are two. Jesus is Jesus, father is father, and Holy Ghost is Holy Ghost. And then verse 14, I've written to you, Father, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I've written to you, young men, because you are strong and the word of God abides in you. Is that the young men today? You are strong and the word of God abides in you and you have overcome the wicked one. Hey? The young men have overcome. The children have overcome. They've all overcome. <laughs> Overcoming the wicked, you have overcome the wicked one. You got no longer any claims on them. Isn't that wonderful? All because of the word. All because of the word. The wonderful word of God. Glory, glory, hallelujah. You see, humanity. Uh, has no hand in in anything of any eternal worth without involving themselves in the in, in the the cross. Hey? I mean. Uh, 
the setback is that uh, they teach it in the in the churches today that humanity would have a hand uh, in the Christ's work without true repentance. That's not possible. That's not possible. You see, the outworking of the cross is another way of saying Jesus has done it all. Now there's a key to get into that. True repentance. True repentance is the way to access the outworking of the cross. And what was done at the cross is mind-boggling. So voluminous, it's endless. <laughs> you know, the, the ignoramus just looks at some so-called man hanging on on a tree because that's the way they killed people in those days who were troubling the wicked society or who were wicked themselves. They hung them up on a tree made a public spectacle and Jesus was numbered with them for our sakes. But if you want to access the outworking of the cross, all the value and jewels, spiritual blessings, power and joy and peace, repent. Repent. Be water baptised. And Father will give you the Holy Ghost. And then you walk by faith in the Son of God. All the way home. Not looking to the left or the right. But you'll hear the voice behind you saying, This is the way. Walk ye in it. For now is the gate that leadeth to life. Difficult be the going thereby, and few find it. But wide is the gate that leadeth to destruction, and easy is the going thereby, and many take that road. So let me say, for most of the time the church is worshipping the church, isn't it? been like that for decades. The church is worshipping the church. We need to worship the head. We need to give all the glory to Jesus. Okay? We need to exalt the Lord. When the church worships the church, the Holy Ghost is grieved. Jesus is trodden underfoot and father's angry. That takes us back to John fourteen, twenty one to twenty four. To be read slowly over and over and over and over and over to so get that punchline. that there's no salvation without obedience. And also, you'll understand, Jesus is not Father and... Father is not Jesus. Jesus is Jesus and Father is Father. I want to give all the glory to Jesus today. Hope you have a wonderful day. 
and don't forget, his word needs no help. There's nothing you can add to it or take away from it to make it any better. It is perfect. The word is perfect. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't need to change. And everybody said, Amen. Amen.